All right, so a biotechnology company that I'd never heard of before this week just announced some early results from their first human clinical trial using some very cool technology that combines cells that produce insulin with a device that protects the cell. Here's what you need to know. All right, the company is called Ensalin, like endocrinology, cell, and then the word in. It's a really small company. They consist of five people. They're based in California. So these results come from their phase one clinical trial. Phase one in a clinical trial is just looking at the safety of something. They're not looking yet at whether this can cure type one diabetes or even potentially sort of manage your blood sugars a little bit. They are truly just looking at the safety of having their device with the implanted cells in your body. Insulin is developing something called an ENCRT. That stands for an encapsulated cell replacement therapy. Basically, it's a teeny little device, looks more like a pouch in my opinion, but they're calling it a device that's placed just under the skin in adults with type one diabetes. That device also contains islet cells from a human cadaver, which is a fancy way of saying someone who has died and donated parts of their body to research. Islet cells are the part of your pancreas that your immune system has attacked and destroyed if you live with type 1 diabetes. Within the islet cells are something really important called beta cells. The beta cells are the ones that really produce insulin. Now here's the goal with this entire device and the cells. They're hoping that the device can protect the cells that produce insulin from your immune system without the need for immunosuppression drugs. That would be a big deal. We've got a few functional cures for type 1 diabetes in other clinical trials that are doing really cool things. They're actually helping people get off insulin entirely, but those other therapies come with immunosuppression drugs. If this device can contain and protect cells that produce insulin without immunosuppression therapy, that would be quite groundbreaking. The biggest struggle for the companies in the past that have tried to develop these devices that protect the cells is scar tissue. When the scar tissue develops around the device, it can actually cut off the oxygen and blood supply because your body's actually supposed to grow blood vessels around this device so that your blood can go through the device, pick up the insulin as the cells are producing insulin, and then carry it throughout your body to all the places it needs to go to manage your blood sugar. But every other device has seen and experienced that reaction of the development of scar tissue. So it's been four months since five adults with type 1 diabetes were selected to participate in this clinical trial. Five adults received this implanted device that just went right under their skin and it contained human cadaver islet cells. Their four month report when they've removed the device and looked at how it's going and how the body is reacting to it and how the cells inside the device are doing, here's what they found. First of all, the report says there was minimal to no fibrosis, which means no scar tissue. They're calling this unusual and encouraging. Secondly, there was good vascularization, which means that the body is growing blood vessels through the device, which means it's sending oxygen and nutrients and doing what it's supposed to do to eventually carry insulin throughout your body. And lastly, and this is a big deal, the cells in the device were still alive, which means it successfully protected the human cadaver cells from the type one immune system. This means literally for the first time in humans, a cell encapsulation approach actually showed living islet cells in the device without any scarring that could otherwise shut down the device. That would be the cool end result of this science and this technology. All right, this is a really big deal because other companies have developed encapsulation devices and there are companies that have developed an endless supply of beta cells so you don't rely on donated cells from a human cadaver. But we've never had an encapsulation device that actually succeeded past this four month mark, past the phase one of a clinical trial in humans. But here's a few things to keep in mind. First of all, of course, phase one, that means we're years from this being something that we can all actually 
you know, sign our name on a list and show up at the doctor's office and get one. Years from that, folks, okay? Phase one, phase two, phase three, this takes years. Speaking of phase two, that's what we still don't know yet. Okay, the cells were alive in the device, but does that mean that they are able to actually produce enough insulin to manage a person's blood sugars effectively? Phase two is gonna look at the actual efficacy of this science, of this technology. Now, phase one is kind of over because they've removed the devices from the five participants. So we've just gotta now wait to hear about phase two or a phase one part B because they only put this device in five people. So there's a lot more to determine here. And we really, we really don't know. I can't stress this enough that even though the cells were alive, we don't know if the cells were actually viable, if they're actually successfully going to produce insulin. It's exciting. It's a step in the right direction. It's achieving something that has never been achieved before so far. So that gives me hope. In the meantime, we still all have to keep managing our blood sugars and taking insulin and counting our carbs and treating our lows and correcting our highs. And I know you're tired of it, but we got to keep going, you guys. We can't give up. And if the folks at Insulin are watching, please don't give up either. Keep going. This is really exciting and we are rooting for you. Oh, wait, before I go, don't forget to check out Diabetes Nerd Network. We just launched this. It's a really cool hub where you can learn about ongoing studies and clinical trials and surveys and market research. DiabetesNerdNetwork.com. Check it out.